Hey guys, and welcome to A Blast From The Past. Commander here, and today I'm playing Golden Axe. This was a game I had a long time ago. It's probably one of the, the first gaming consoles that I actually had. It was um, on the Mega Drive. Or if you're from the colonies, it would be the Genesis. Alright, I'm gonna pick Genghis. Genghis, what was it? Thunderhead? Thunderbeard? Right, I need a few moments to remember the controls. I'm gonna see how far I can get on one life here. Well, you know, one. Alright, let's see, so. Okay, we're good with that. That's jump. That's attack, which means the other button there is my magic. I don't want to waste that. Right, I'm ready. Oh yeah, there's... Oh shit! Right in the middle of him. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoop! Ah. So, yeah! Back in the day, I had the... the Gen 1 Mega Drive. Or Genesis, whichever you want to call it. This was the, uh... Whoop! The one with the... the... The big fuck-off chunky, uh... switch. For a power button. I mean, you, you clunk this thing along, and that you were assured it was on or off at that stage. Oh, thank you very much, you little thieving bastard. He deserves it, trust me. He'll come back later and steal all my shit. Oh, I hit those birds! And the bird that they're riding. Here we go. Huh. Oh my god, I got screwed over by the fucking edge of the screen! No, you don't, you bitch! Oh, my bird! You're dead. Shit, there goes one of them up. No, you fucking cow! Fuck you! Right. So, yes, the Gen 2 then came out a couple of years later. It was a smaller version of the, the original, which had sort of a pushdown button uh, for power and reset. It was like a, a, an RNG sort of look to it. Still, nice machines, but the uh, the original, that uh, was like, whoops! Gorgeous big chunky thing. I remember I used to cover it in stickers that you'd get from like comics and games magazines from the, the time. I'm absolutely maxed out with my magic. That's brilliant. Where's the boss? Turtle Village. Give me him before he fucking hits me. Give me that one. Shit, he's on the edge of the screen. I can't get him. Nope. Son of a bitch. Right. Fuck off. Come on. I was gonna start. Oh my god. I was gonna start the. Huh. The video by. Trying to recreate an old cheat for infinite magic on the uh, the game, but then I realised that the cheat I'm referring to is actually from Golden Axe 2. It used to be a fucking mm. the strategy was for the, these guys was you got them one on either side, and then you just owned them. See, I've got no magic, so there's nothing for you to steal on me, you little dick. Lovely. Golden Axe 2 was a good game as well. I remember uh, playing that a long time ago. The idea with the uh, the cheat on that was you had to hold the magic button down from the very start of the level. And then you went through the first boss, got through the night. When you started the second level, then you released your magic and the game glitched. It wasn't actually unlimited magic, it gave you a lot of magic, but towards the end of the game, your bar was starting to deplete. The only real reason I realised that I, could, I couldn't do it in this one was because my magic, or the, the magic you can't charge up to select which one you're using. You hit magic and you use all of what you have in the, uh, whoops, <laughs> in the one with the cheat, you could select, you know, which magic uh, level you wanted to use, so in my case one, two, or three, but in this one it's just, you know, use whatever you've got. Oh, sorry, 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 didn't mean to kill you like that. Oh, there's a dragon up here. Love these things. Oh, you bitch! 
Why is it always fucking women riding these things? Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you some more! Ah, and he took me from behind. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> these games were fantastic back in the day. I believe I had this on... It was probably, I think it was a, like a double... A double or a triple cartridge. Like, um... It was this and... Streets of Rage 2, I want to say. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. But games back then were absolutely fantastic. Same with, uh, like... Whoops! There was always little... Hidden cheats that the uh, developers would put in. Like in the case of Golden Axe 2, the one for unlimited... Uh, unlimited, um... Magic. And honestly, I, uh, back then, anyway, I, oh, you little shits, I don't know how you f uh, you find them out. Like, how would you ever know that if you held the magic button for the whole level, released it in the second level, that you would get Im infinite uh, infinite magic? I mean, you little shits, you're gonna fuck me over. So I'm down two lives already. That is not good. Huh. And the fireball fucking dragon is gonna screw me. Oh, and I lost him. I remember, like the the way you got cheats back in the the day was, whoops, you like to watch. Well, you could get them from the the, the magazines, but uh, the the way I used to get them was from like uh, TV shows like Games Master. Uh, that was a, a show way back when. Like, if you understand what I'm talking about here, you're as old as me. Games Master was this fantastic show that was on Channel 4 in the, the UK years and years and years ago. The idea of it was, it was kind of like a, a game show almost. Uh, so two people would come on and challenge each other to a specific game. Whoever won. Oh dear, I am fucked. Huh? Whoever won the challenge won uh, a trophy which was the golden joystick and honestly the, the golden joystick looked fucking epic it was a great looking thing lovely I remember fucking always dying at this one two there we are huh. Huh. Missed him. All right. so yeah it was hosted by a guy called Dominic Diamond, if you ever heard of him, very, very knowledgeable guy, uh, knew a lot about the, the game industry, even back then, like just listening to him uh, when he was going through the uh, the, the commentary with the, the people who were playing, he knew a lot, and a uh, brilliant guy, he, was, he did it for the first couple of seasons, then he went away, and it was hosted by some other bloke that no one really cares about, and then he came back, Lovely, and I'll take care of you lot. Did it just shock my dragon? No. Ooh, uh. The Games Master himself, this was a guy... Oh, you shit. He was a partially... Partially CG'd entity that uh, people would come on the show, you know, ask questions, tips on how to beat a boss, cheats, things like that and he would answer him. The thing was, the, the guy who played the Games Master was a world-renowned astrophysicist, or astrologer. Wait a minute, which is the right way around? <laughs> which is the one that doesn't deal with fucking... dippy fucking... Uh, stupid signs of the, the zodiac. Is that astrologers? That sounds about right. Oh no! I'm dead! Anyway, he was an astro astronomer. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking continue. How do I continue? Why can't I? Help! There. But um, he, he was an incredibly smart guy, and he just decided... The, the, the producers of the show knew a guy who knew him. Uh, they, they wanted someone who was going to be this incredibly wise... I'm stuck. What's going on here? I'm actually stuck here. I can't move on. Hello? Hello? Hmm. 
Be right back. Right. Sorry about that. I think I'm back. Anyway, where was I? Yes, talking about the Games Master himself. So he was uh, a very, very well known, uh, world renowned astronomer uh, called Patrick Moore. Uh, the guy was fantastic, but he uh, he just did it for a bit of a laugh. It was nothing that he was, you know, serious about. It was uh, a friend of the producer uh, knew him. They wanted someone who, someone the, the game master was meant to be this wise, wise old man. That was the the way they sort of envisioned it, and uh, the, you know, someone who oh, flip me. Who, when they spoke, the way their voice was, you could tell that there was wisdom there, and Patrick Moore was uh, absolutely perfect for it. So uh, the the producer went out to speak to him, uh, explained exactly what they they were going to do. He didn't really have anything to do with uh, with games. He wasn't uh, into them at all. He didn't keep up with them or anything like that. But he he said he wanted to to do it. So. Um, they signed a, a contract and everything, and uh, the producer, he told this story on a documentary once to say that um, when he inquired, you know, how much he would usually, uh, Patrick Moore would usually get for voiceover work, uh, Moore just turned around and said, usually about two bottles of whiskey. So every time he went over with the, the, the paycheck, he always brought two bottles of whiskey, and uh, the way the story went, Moore would open one there and then, and they would just uh, sit and drink it. So, <laughs> the oh fuck, he's, he's gone. Games Master was uh, probably one of the, the, the first of its kind sort of gaming uh, within the the media. Uh, no one had ever put on um, a, a show like that b beforehand, I, I don't think. Uh, it was certainly marketed towards uh, a younger generation. You know, the kids would come on, ask the, the Games Master the, the questions get the, the cheat codes or whatever and they would compete in the, the challenges and it, 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 whoops, didn't see him coming, oh, and it spawned uh, a number of different shows, some good, some not so good, like the, the ones I sort of remember from my childhood, one of them would have been, what was it called, um, Bad Influence, uh, hosted by... Andy Crane and Violet Berlin. Uh, it was a, a great game. Uh, sorry, no, it's game. Games on my head. Uh, it was a great, uh, a great show. Fuck me. Huh, huh. It, it didn't really have the 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 challenges or the the competition that Games Master had. It was more of a whoop, review uh, show, so they would have like the the latest games coming out. Uh, I remember them rever uh, reviewing Sonic 2 and just going, oh, it's awesome. Uh, but they, they would do things like that. And at the end of, hello, at the end of the show, they would have what they called a data blast. Now, this was just pages and pages, about 60 odd pages of Game Genie, action replay, basic cheat codes, things like that. But they would flash them up on screen in about 30 seconds. So the idea that to read them, you had to record the, the show with uh, your VCR at the time. Then you played it back, and what you did was when it got to the data blast, you would pause the playback, and you would use the, the VCR had like a frame by frame, whoops, tracking. So you would, oh, you little shit, they double teamed me. I didn't do as well getting back up to uh, to where I was, but we're, we're fine, we're fine. So yes, you would use your frame-by-frame frame tracking to get through the, the pages, read them and, you know, find out whichever one you want, uh, whichever one you wanted. Now, the, the quality on it was absolutely pathetic. Uh, if you watched my Hotline Miami 2 video, or even if you ow, played it yourself, if you go into the main menu, Fuck, you just flew right past me. Well, oh, I'm complaining. If you go onto the main menu, that's kind of what the pause of a VCR looked like, but not as good quality. And then when you were going through the, the tracking, everything was usually out of focus. But that's how you got a mass load of cheats dead easy. Oh, you thieving little ganches. 
The other one I re remember, now, I, I can't honestly remember its name. I remember it being on Sky One, and it was actually, it was shown, it was on all week. Now, when I say it was on all week, each day was slightly different. So one day it would have a, sh a show about cheat codes, one day it would be challenges, one day it would be reviews, I, I think. The only, uh, the, it was all hosted by different characters. The one I remember was a guy called Big Boy Barry. And he, he, he I think he did the, I wonder, did he do the challenges or did he do the cheat codes? Fuck, I can't remember. He was a, uh, he was a character anyway, like the, each, oh dear, each show had their, their own sort of characters. There was like a, a, a computerized mistress, I think. The Pink Parlor, that sounds familiar. Or was that the strip club I went to? I'm sorry. Can't remember. Uh, vaguely, uh Fucking dragons! This isn't Game of Thrones, you bitch! I vaguely remember something like that. Oh, she's gonna kick me. I tried to kick her, not fucking... That was the problem with games back here. You only had three fucking buttons. And usually one button did everything. Huh. There we go. Yeah, big boy Barry. So I think he did the the challenges very much like the the games master uh, kind of aspect to it. Why well, yeah? Uh, it was those the the shows back then. Like you, you watched them because they they, they featured games. I honestly I can't remember if oh fuck me. I can't remember if the the the, the shows were any good. I, well I remember. I remember Games Master. Now it was good, but the the ones that I'm talking about on Sky, whatever the the hell they were called, don't remember if they were any good. But you watched them because oh shit, <laughs> because there was games on it. This is Sky One, a part of the British Sky Broadcasting Network. to Games World. Tonight is Fight Night with Beat the Elite. Uh, at one point I remember Sega doing something called Pirate TV? Pirate something? Ow! And it was only on for like Five minutes. I don't. I think it was an experiment that they were they were trying. They weren't sure if it was going to to take off or, or something. It was done by a ow, an animated skull. Oh, this will work. <laughs> They're both in there themselves, so I can just keep charging them. <laughs> but I think it all sort of span off the Games Master, and it ran for a long time. The, the CG around the, the Games Master was actually very cool. It changed like from season to season. Patrick Moore's face was always the, the constant. Everything else around him was uh, CG. So, for example, um, one season it would be sort of steampunkish. Another season it would be very futuristic. Where am I now? Oh dear. <laughs> Come here. He's just staying out of my fucking reach. Yeah, I knew he was gonna do that. You little bastard. Oh dear. Now if you don't know who Patrick Moore is, oh for fuck's sake! You little bastards. No! Do you know what? I think I'm actually quite close to the fucking end here. There's just they're trying to screw me over. Gotcha! 
See, he's, he's like staying just up or under me. And I can't. Him and his mate. Oh, I knew he was going to fucking do that. See, get him on the sides. There we go. Always wanted to go on Games Master myself. The, it had an anniversary not too long ago, I think maybe last year. And uh, I, I wish they would bring it back. I, I suppose it's it's nostalgia more than anything else. If maybe if they did bring it back, the the way it was wouldn't be the the same. But uh, it was certainly uh, a great game. I, I always remember one one challenge that was set by a, a guy, and you you could write in and you know send in uh, videos and things like that. Yeah, I think this is the end. You can send in videos to see if you could beat the 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 challenge. So one of the ones that I remember was uh oh Sonic. I think it was two the not Green Hill Zone Emerald Hill Zone. Uh, you bitch. And it was. Fastest time to get three lives. So the first one was a hidden box. Oh dear. The second one was getting the 100 rings without, you know, getting hit. That kind of thing. You stupid skeletons! Okay. I missed him. What the fuck is that? Oh my god. Oh. No, game over. Uh, that, that challenge, the trying to get three lives, I I was pretty sure I could have beaten that. I actually had a camera set up. This was years and years ago. I, that was the, the first capture I ever I, I ever did. It was in Sonic 2. I had a video, video camera set up to record uh, Sonic 2. I probably still have it somewhere. Yeah, oh goodness knows, it's all a VHS. Oh, but anyway, that is Golden Axe and a little walk down memory road. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. See you now. Bye-bye.